Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take a seat. Congratulations to all the graduates. Thank you to the staff and the alumni and parents and guardians and everyone who is here to support your graduates. I have a few quick tips for you that I think will help you in your pursuit as you go up into the real world right now. Tip number one, you must identify all the hats you wear and make it a habit. Now I'm a musician, so I think in musical terms. So think of your favorite band and seeing your favorite band live in concert, your band will have a set list. So this set list is all the tried and true classics, but also it has a few songs that are new ones. These are songs that the band is trying out and you wanna do the same thing with your list of roles, all the hats you wear. Now, there are four types of roles. First type is a mind, body, spirit role. This could be, for example, a, a visionary or a meditator, a spiritual person, whatever your religion is. Body, of course, will be a role that you need to maintain and stay strong and healthy. And you've got your mind too. Maybe it could be that you're the world-class problem solver. So you wanna think about all these different roles and make a list. Now the next category of role is the giving and receiving roles. This might be philanthropy, giving, volunteering, and also it might be financial. Maybe you see yourself as an investor or a financial whiz, a millionaire, a billionaire. Next category is the personal category. And this is what you would think of as a usual role. You know, you're a sister or a brother, relationships, hobbyist, maybe you're an adventurer at heart. So you could put adventurer as one of your roles. Also, we have professional roles as you're heading out into the professional world. You have to adopt not only your key role at your occupation, but also the other supportive ones. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you've got to have a marketing role and a networking role. So you have to think about what type of roles do I need to start using like a placeholder for now that you're moving towards. You don't have to be doing that role to have a role. You could say that you are a millionaire, even if you're not a millionaire yet, you're setting the groundwork for that role. Now there are many benefits to having a role list. Most people have 15 to 20 different hats they wear. So that's about the length of the role list you wanna have. Having a role list will help you start to see all the moving pieces of your life. It's very hard to manage your life when you're in it. You have to get above and get some perspective. I also suggest taking index cards and laying, the, laying them out in front of you so you can see all these different roles that you play and how you transition between all of them. It's such an important skill and it will help you for the rest of your life, I guarantee. In fact, I believe it's the most powerful time management skill you'll ever learn. Tip number two, my friends and colleagues, is to unleash your creativity. Now, the greatest thing you can do for your creativity, in my opinion, is to start a daily journal. Now, here's an extra tip. Start an audio journal. This one, it will save you a lot of time from typing or writing by hand. You can still do that if you'd like, but think of this. Throughout the day, have a notebook and you jot down phrases, things that come up, thoughts that are unique to the day, experiences, in shorthand, just little bullet points, or you could talk on your phone or whatever, capture it however you want. Then at the end of the day, get your recorder or your phone, just say the date and just blab about the day. It takes five minutes and you'll have an excellent record of each day of your life. You'll capture those high moments and the low moments too of your life. And then it's a great reference uh, resource too. You can look back and go, well, April 16th last year, what did I do? Five years ago on January 3rd, what was I doing? And it's an excellent way to keep track and keep organized. And journaling really helps you become more creative because you start to develop this attitude of gratitude 
and you have that expectation that each day you're going to have good ideas to write about and to explore, to talk about. So it's a really powerful thing to try. Also, there's an exercise I suggest called word salad. Start to be aware of, of new vocabulary words. I call them color words, kind of uncommon words. And they make your experience richer and make you more colorful and more expressive. What sounds better? The dinner was great or the dinner was scrumptious? Big difference in emotion between the different choices of words. Also, I suggest consume the news, read newspapers. I like to read, I read three newspapers a day every morning, like clockwork. Now you're gonna have your own system, of course, but no matter what is your focus area, if you're a psychology major, you could read the entire, scan through the newspaper, all kinds of stories from around the world will have some way to react and, and to interact with what you do, your mission. I look at the news as how can I help? I never get down about the news. I read it with a notebook right at my side and I say, what can I do to help? And I suggest you do the same. Also, it's a great habit to cultivate your passions, hobbies, and interests. You always wanna have interests on the back burner, things you're trying out. A lot of times I talk to people and they don't have many interests, no hobbies, no passions. You've got to, you've got to um, focus on them and make it a habit that you're curating that list of passions, hobbies, and interests. Sometimes an interest will become a hobby that will become a passion. Interest is something that you just have some interest in. It may fizzle out, but it may build. A hobby, of course, is a hobby. And a passion is something you can't live without. So always have that list. I suggest once a year at least make a big brainstorm list of your passions, hobbies, and interests. Steve Jobs was very passionate about calligraphy in college. In fact, this approach to the visual representation of emotion became a very key element of his marketing for his company, Apple. So you never know where it could lead. Tip number three is to clarify your goals and put them in writing. You've got to have clear goals. Now, I, I have two types of goals that I suggest you have. Action goals and statement goals. Action goals, of course, is going to require some kind of action. It might be meditate twice a day for 20 minutes. Very clear, very precise, measurable, and the statement goal might be, I'm a visionary, or I earn X dollars per month. I'm a black belt in jujitsu. So it's very clear again. And I suggest think big. Don't be limited to what you are already experiencing. Break down that barrier of what you don't have yet, what you're working towards, what you would like and get that in your subconscious. I have one more tip and that's to have a system for managing your large projects. It's so key because a lot of us vastly underestimate how much time it's required to do a certain project. We can get so much more done if we have that system. And I suggest a seven stage system for projects and creative activities you're doing. The first stage is to identify the spark. Now that's getting that emotional connection with your project. It's so key, that's why it's number one. It's gonna drive you through the completion of the project. If you don't have that emotional spark, what makes you excited about this project? What makes you feel good, like a trigger? That's what you need to focus on is identifying the spark. Now stage number two is, to the, is, the, is called the gathering stage. Now this of course, Twyla Tharp, the great choreographer, described her gathering stage technique. She just took a big cardboard box, slapped a duct tape label on it, and just started tossing stuff in there related to this project. That's the gathering stage. You don't have to make it very complex, okay? From resources from all things, books and movies and magazines, conversations, people, anything that can help you 
with that project. Stage three, the brainstorming stage. Ask questions, millions of questions, as many questions as you can come up with. And this will help you start to get the ideas flowing. Stage four is the structure stage. This is the brass tacks of the project. If it's a book, how many chapters are there? If it's a musical piece, how many movements? This sort of large structure thinking can come about after you've done those other things, you've identified your spark and you've gathered your resources and you've brainstormed. Now it's the structure stage. And throughout your project, you're gonna to have to alternate between zeroing into something specific and backing out and seeing the bigger picture all the time, spiraling in and spiraling out. Stage five is the action stage. Of course, this is when, when you're gonna roll up those sleeves and do the actual work of the project. A lot of people have the problem of starting right in at the action stage. And then they wonder why they get blocked and they're, they're making limited progress. You haven't done the groundwork. You haven't set everything in motion in the proper sequence. Next stage is the refining stage. And I find this to be one of the most rewarding stages of all. Now, when you're with a group and a team, it's gonna be trickier to refine. You can't refine as much with a team as you can being an artist or an individual, but you can work together and really allow that time because a lot of times the refining stage doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes a lot of repetitions and to keep swooping back and trying to make it sparkle even more and more and more and more. It's really rewarding. And the final stage is the celebrate stage. That's when you celebrate completing your great project. You're gonna have a half a dozen large projects going at any given time throughout your life. You might be building a deck or an extension on your house or whatever it is, okay? Planning a vacation, planning a wedding, planning a anniversary party. All of these are large projects. Writing a book, putting together a website. So I thank you for listening to this presentation. We've got four tips for you. I'll review them quickly here. Tip one, identify all the hats you wear. Number two, unleash that creativity with your audio journal. Tip number three, clarify those goals and have them in writing, the action goals and the statement goals. And finally, have that system for project management, seven stages of projects, identify the spark, the gathering stage, the brainstorming stage, the structure stage, action stage, refining stage, and completion stage. Thank you and the best of luck in all of your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you.